distinctively different pipe tobaccos. Old Briar. Dill's Best. Model. And Tweed present Martin Kane, Private Eye, starring William Gargan. Mr. Marks, prompt as usual, I see. To be anything but prompt is to be inefficient, Miss Lydia. And inefficiency costs money. So, in these days of inflation, it behoves us all not to waste one moment, one cent. How true, Mr. Marks, how true. You will notice I have left one candle unlit. A small saving, but a saving nonetheless. Very commendable, very, I'm sure. But, however, you are rather tardy in your uh, ways of thrift. Very belated. Ah, you have talked to the gentleman in charge of the bank? Yes, I went to the president himself, uh, uh, Mr. Wilson. And? He's very sorry, but he is unable to grant another extension on the mortgage. You mean he wouldn't? His hands are tied, Miss Lydia. He has to answer to a board of directors. How is it possible for him to grant another? On what basis? Well, we can repay the mortgage whenever we choose, Mr. Mock. Miss Lydia and I are quite well to do. Father saw to that. Yes, good evening, Miss Bella. <laughs> I'm afraid you'll have to explain our financial position to Sarah again, Mr. Mark. Her mind has been wandering of late. Don't you say that. My mind has not been wandering. Sometimes I forget, perhaps, but it's because of my work. I have so many demands for my painting. <laughs> so many people are waiting for my painting. Yes, yes, yes. I'll, uh, I'll uh, tell you once more your financial status. Now, it's very vital that you listen carefully. Oh, I will, Mr. Marks. I'll listen very carefully. The uh, money that your father left in trust for you and Miss Lydia and Agnes is gone. The uh, last of the cash uh, credits was spent over ten years ago. However, I've been able to supply the three of you with food and other necessities uh, by mortgaging this house. <laughs> ah, 
However, the money on that mortgage is now gone. And the bank has sent in a note of foreclosure. Foreclosure? Why? Because we have been unable to repay a cent to the bank, silly. Miss Lydia, I'll thank you not to use abusive language. But, Mr. Mark, I have the money. Thousands of dollars from my paintings. What do you propose we do in this crisis, Mr. Marks? Well, I'm afraid that you'll have to place Agnes in uh, an institution, Miss Lydia. But Sarah and I have promised Father... Yes, 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 yes. But now, look, we must face the facts. You have no income, and this house belongs to the bank. After next week, the three of you will have to leave here. Leave this house? Oh, but I couldn't do that, Mr. Marks. I have my work. Yes, yes, uh, Miss Sarah. You may take your painting with you. But where would I go? I haven't set foot outside of this house since Father left us. Yes, I've given that very, very careful thought. And uh, I have a suggestion to make uh, uh, to both of you. There is a, a, a house for um, uh, troubled people. It's uh, operated by the state. You mean an institution, Mr. Mark? Oh, no, 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 Miss Lydia. It's a... Uh, it's a rest home now, now, uh, for distressed people like yourselves. What did I do with those papers? Oh, this is your father's will. Where are those papers? Oh, I, I must have left them in the car. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go and get them. Yeah, well, you're gone. I will sit and see you, Mr. Marsh. Oh, Agnes, how she hates to be locked in a room. I'll just go upstairs and see if I can quiet her. You see that you lock her in when you leave her. Oh, Lydia, couldn't I leave the door unlocked just once? I'm sure Agnes will be a good girl. <laughs> Fellow, uh, a hula popper, isn't it, Mr. Kane? That's right, Sergeant. I got me a nice six pound walleye pipe with that baby last summer. Oh, That's so. Six <laughs> pounds, huh? Yeah. Hmm, you don't say so, Martin. Yes, I do say, and I just happen to have proof in the form of a picture. Now, bother I... showing me the pictures. I wouldn't believe you could land a minnow unless I show you both the fish in my own true eyes. Thank you for your confidence, pal. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, What's mm. this fishing here? Oh, oh boy, oh boy, that's the greatest sport in the world. You know, the last time I went angling, I threw in the hook, and, brother, I caught a wobble. Well, I'm uh, ah, sorry, sorry to, to be uh, rude, Captain, but I'm going to get the bass to pike. I better be on my way. I'm oh, ready for the fishman. Oh, I'm going up in the country, up maybe as far as Lime Lake. Lime oh, Lake? Uh, Big Scott, that reminds me of why I'm here. We've got a job to do in Lime Lake, Sergeant. Mm. But, but, but Lime Lake isn't in our jurisdiction, Captain. I know, I know, but missing persons wants us to check with a local lawyer up there, an old bird by the name of Marks. It seems that he called on a client about three days ago and he hasn't been heard from since. Come on, let's get rolling. Hey, wait for me, Captain. You can give me a hitch there, boy. While you're investigating a lawyer, I'll probe that lake for a fish dinner. Huh? <laughs> Come so on, long, Captain. Come on. So long. My, oh, my, what a tough flight that Marty leads. <laughs> yes, sir. Can I help you? Yeah, a can of Copenhagen, please. Right you are, sir. Copenhagen. It's the best made, you know. Oh, you're right there, pal. I use it at the plant all the time. Shall I open it, sir? Yeah. Check the date on the bottom of the can yourself. Good deal. That's sure fresh, the way I like it. Now, uh, how about a good, mild pipe tobacco? Well, mister, the mildest one there is. Dill's best. Flavor cut for extra mildness and cool smoking. Dill's best. You know, I think my grandfather used to smoke that. Yeah, it could be. They've been making it for over 100 years. Oh, I guess they ought to know how, then. Know how is right. And it's that know how that developed uh, flavor cut and put Dill's best in the class by itself. You see here? Oh, every particle of that dill's best is cut to just the right size for perfect smoking. It's cut uniformly so it burns slower and longer. And that's why it's extra mild and cool. Oh, well, that makes sense. How much? Well, just 15 cents for this pouch-type container. Uh, what do you mean, pouch-type? Well, you see how wide that opens at the top? Well, you can dip your whole pipe right in there like a regular tobacco pouch. And you fold it down, good and tight like that, and it keeps the tobacco fresh. Slide it into your pocket, stays nice and flat. Okay, it's Dill's best. You twisted my arm. Let's see, there you are. Well, that's twice times 15 is 30. Out of the half. And here's your change, sir, and thank you very much, and please come in again. Thank you. Thank you. Don't be such a slut. 
Slowpoke. I'm coming, Miss. I'm coming. Be careful. Agnes, don't trip the curtains just here. One more step. Be careful now. Get away from that. Ah! Now you sit right over here and be a good girl. Now, now you can see everything if you're very quiet. Mind you, not to frown. My door, lady. Yes, they've come. Oh, dear. What shall we do? Let them in, of course. Come along, Sarah. this trip has turned out to be. Yeah. The next time I take your advice about which road to follow, I, I'm Sergeant. terribly sorry, Captain. I felt certain I knew a shortcut to Lime Lake. Six <laughs> hours to travel less than 200 miles. Why didn't you speak up, Kane? I had interfere with the police department? Oh, never, never, never. Well, at least it's encouraging to find Mr. Mark's car parked out there. Uh, well... Yes? I'm Captain Burke at the police department. Is this the Sloan home? This is the Sloan house, and I am Lydia Sloan. Well, uh, a man by the name of John Marks has been reported missing, and we're looking for him. Is he here, Miss Sloan? Yes, Mr. Marks is here. Won't you come inside? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, by the way, this is Sergeant Cross and Mr. Martin Kane. How do you do? How do you do? My sister, Sarah Sloan, gentlemen. How do you do? How do, you do? Hello. Now, perhaps you'll take us to Mr. Marks? Of course. Please follow me. Please get out of my way, sir. Find Mr. Marks, gentlemen. Uh, where? In the trunk. Trunk. Good heavens! Mutilated by a knife. Beyond recognition. All right, lady. Now let's get the straight of this. Who's responsible for that? My sister, Agnes. Uh, don't touch him. You mustn't hurt Agnes. It would be wicked. She couldn't help what she did. She's really a good girl, really. You better get your sister out of there, Miss Sloan. Now, without that knife. Agnes. Come on, get her out, Sarah. Agnes, get her out. Agnes, darling, come out, dear. No one will hurt you. Now, don't be a naughty girl. We have company. Now, here's Sarah the knife, dear. Uh, 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 no, 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 let the nice man have the knife. I'll find you uh, another one. Take her up to her room, Sarah. Be uh, sure you lock her in this uh, time. Uh, Come on, Agnes, uh, dear. We'll, we'll explore your room. Perhaps we can find something to amuse us. A spider or an ant. A spider or an ant. Nice playthings. Yes. Agnes is rather eccentric about living things, Captain. She enjoys destroying spiders and ants. She pulls off their legs. She had a kitten once. She strangled it. Planning to do a little excavating, Miss Sloan? Sarah and I were about to bury poor Mr. Marks. We felt it was the proper thing to do. Well, didn't it occur to you that the police department might be interested in this murder? Murder? Yeah. Mr. Marks was not murdered, Captain. It was an unfortunate accident. Agnes is not responsible for what she does. Well, why didn't you call the police, Miss Sloan? Why should I? Sarah and I knew the police would come here eventually. <laughs> Besides, we have not got a telephone in our home. You have neighbors, you know. I'm afraid I don't know, Mr. Kane. You see, I have not been outside this house since Father died. Neither has Sarah. <sighs> Let's get out of this morgue. All right, you can tell us the whole story upstairs. Oh, as you say, Captain, as you say. Agnes! Agnes, now you must make a fuss, dear. Lydia said you were to be locked in your room. After, after what happened this afternoon, we 
wouldn't want to disobey Lydia Dead now, would we? After all, she is the oldest. Shortly after tea, gentlemen, Mr. Marks complained of feeling a little ill. My sister and I persuaded him to lie down here on this couch. Each of us went to our rooms. After a little while, I heard a scream. It was Mr. Marks. When we rushed in here, Agnes was bending over him, the knife still in her hand. Any idea why she did it? Agnes is very violent in her likes and dislikes, Mr. Kane. She disliked Mr. Marks. I dear Agnes should take such a dislike to our good Mr. Moss. I really can't say. Perhaps it's because Agnes is a little strange. Yeah. You can say that again, sister. Well, if you will excuse me, gentlemen, I must get some supper for Agnes. Can I get you anything? Oh, no, no, thank you. Hmm. And you, Mr. Kane? Oh, uh, no thanks. I'll just eat. And you, Captain? No thanks. Tell me, Miss Sarah, why didn't you phone the police when all this happened? Oh, dear me. I couldn't leave the house, Mr. Kane. Never. Not unless Lydia left with me. Uh, are you two that inseparable, Miss Sarah? If you mean, am I bound to my sister through a sense of devotion, the answer is no, Sergeant. I despise Lydia. Oh. When father died, Lydia wanted his room for herself. Only I returned home first from the funeral. The room has been mine ever since. All mine. If I left the house, Lydia would take it from me. She might even destroy my paintings. Oh, you paint? Oh, my, yes, Sergeant. I'm a very famous painter. The whole world knows and loves me. Surely you've seen my wonderful work at the National Art Gallery? Oh, yes, 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 of course, Miss Sarah. <laughs> well, uh, we'll be leaving you now, sister, but uh, we'll send some men back to pick up Mr. Marks. Oh, how kind of you, Captain. No, I simply hate digging. You hate digging? Well, you, uh... Tell Miss Lydia that I'm holding you two responsible for the custody of your sister Agnes. That is, until they send someone from the state asylum to get her. You're not going to put Agnes in an institution, are you, Captain? Well, now, that's not up to me, lady. But I can tell you this much. Your sister Agnes will either end up in an institution for the criminally insane or in the electric chair. <gasps> come on, come on, let's get out of here. Well, how about it, Marty? You coming? I'll be right with you, Captain. <laughs> Hiya, have you? Hi, Harry. Let's have a pouch of Old Briar. You bet, and I was saving it just for you. Old Briar, the master mixture of rare flavor and aroma. You can say that again. Thank you. Here's your 15 cents. I'll see you soon, Harry. Oh, yeah. Well, hi there, Captain. I understand you bagged something beside fish up at Lime Lake last night. Now, don't be cute, Hap. That's not funny. That old guy looked like he'd been pushed to a meat grinder sideways. Worst sight I've seen in 15 years on the force. Say, uh, Marty tells me these Sloan sisters are a real loony trio. Yeah, three of the weirdest zombies I ever saw. I'm uh, driving up to that haunted house this afternoon. I'm going to take the state psychiatrist and a couple of muscle men along with me. I'll clap that Agnes Sloan in a straitjacket. Oh, no, wait a minute, Captain. It's my theory that Agnes did not murder John Marks. What'd you say? Remember those ashes we saw in the fireplace? Yeah. Well, that fireplace hadn't been used in years. Yet those fresh ashes would make up just about the size of a good legal document. So what? So I paid the uh, late John Marks, uh, the attorney at law, and went to his office, and I persuaded the secretary to let me take a peek at the Sloan files. And? And I came up with these. This is the copy of the mortgage on the Sloan house, and a letter from the bank foreclosing next week, and the last will and testament of one Andrew Sloan, the father of the three zombies from uh, Lime Lake. Come on, come on, get to the point. Well, now, old man Stevens left all his money to the daughters. But realizing that they were a little peculiar, he appointed John Marks as the guardian. 
Well, what's so unusual about that? Now, now, look, he knew he didn't have enough money to, for the women uh, to, for the rest of their lives. So he provided a $50,000 life insurance policy on the life of John Marks. And the three daughters became the beneficiaries, eh? Exactly, Captain. And uh, he figured, you see, that the uh, old boy would just pop off about the time that the estate petered out. Oh, look here. What are you trying to do, Karen? Make a homicide out of a simple murder? No, no, no. Oh, Captain, Captain, for me. Captain. 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 Excuse me, Skin. Yes. Before you left for Lime Lake, the autopsy report on John Birch just came through. What John autopsy Marks. report? I didn't order any autopsy. Well, I, I called the sergeant from Marks' office. It was my idea, Oh, Captain. your idea. Yeah, yes. I might have known that you would what? try to complicate this affair. Let's see what, what? this is. Red jumping skittlefish. What is this? Death was caused by a lethal dose of hydrocyanic acid. The body was mutilated shortly after death occurred. Oh, no. Don't tell me I've got to go up there and match wits with those three buddy old dames. I'm afraid so, Captain. All right. Come on, let's get started. Yes, sir. See you. So long, Captain. Yes, sir. Do you need some tobacco? I sure do. Pouch of model. Coming up. Model, the finest ten cents worth of tobacco that ever made a pipe taste better. Did you say ten cents? Yes, sir, I said ten cents, and still only ten cents everywhere, and plenty mile, too. That's for me. Thank you very much. Thank Come you. in again, will you please? Even a novice can plainly see that the fingerprints on that bottle of poison belong to Agnes Sloan. All right, Marty, what do you say about that? Well, two things, Captain. First, I don't think Agnes has the mentality to use that bottle, even if she knew what was in it. And take a look at the bottle. It's wiped clean. No dust on it at all. Well, Mr. Oh, I, I see. You, you mean your theory is that one of the other sisters slipped the uh, poison into Mr. Mark's tea? Then wipe the bottle clean of all fingerprints and then somehow got Agnes to handle it. Yes, right? says five will get you 50. That's just about what happened. Oh, well, what about the carving job on the old man? No sane person would have done that, Kane. I think you'll find, Captain, that either Agnes or Lydia carved up the old man and then after the job was done, put the uh, knife into Agnes's hands. I also think that you'll find that one of those two sisters is as dangerous. As a matter of fact, dangerously insane more than Agnes. Will, Father's Will. Oh, yes. I seem to remember Mr. Marks mentioning it the last time he was here. Oh, was it the time before? Well, I must ask him when he comes again. Uh, but you confess that you did know about the insurance policy on Mr. Marks' life. Well, it seems to me that Father mentioned it. Oh, was it Mr. Marks? Or was it you, Captain? Oh, never mind. Did any of you know about that insurance policy, Miss Lydia? Oh, no. Neither Sarah nor I read the will. So that makes your theory about Mr. Mark's death quite absurd, Captain. What about these ashes in here? What were they? Oh, that must have been Agnes. Uh, oh, Agnes probably found a match and set fire to some paper. And like a good girl, she used the fireplace. Not like a good girl. We're getting nowhere here fast, Kane. Ah, huh, Captain, uh, give me the knife and the bottle. Maybe we can get uh, Agnes to help us. Yeah. Uh, now, don't be afraid, Agnes. I just want to return your playthings. You lost them, you know, Agnes. Come on. You lost them, Agnes. Now, you should return them to your sister. You don't want to be punished, do you? Locked in a room. Uh. Come on now, Agnes. Return the playthings. Go ahead now. Give them to the sister who gave them to you. Go ahead, Agnes. Go on. No! Oh, wretch! Oh, oh little wretch! Oh, I won't let you harm Agnes. It's for you, Sarah. You put them up to this. You saw me do it. You told them. No, Lydia, no. You cheated me out of Father's room. Now you want the whole house to yourself. But you shan't have it! Oh, you shan't have it! Hold it, hold it, Miss... Yeah, you... Stop her! What? Stop her! Sergeant, keep your eye on her. All right, Miss Sarah, come back. Come, come back, Miss Sarah. She's not going to... Come back and sit down now. Take it easy. Take it easy. She's not going to destroy your painting. Take it easy. Now, take it easy. Sit down here. Sit down. Keep it quiet. Stop tonight! 
Captain, she's out of this world. All right, I don't want to hurt her. Give it to me, Lydia. Give it to me. Lydia, you better get out of here. Lydia, 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 are comfortably settled in a home upstate where all three are going to get kind and sympathetic care. But boy, oh boy, another second that maniac would have driven the knife through Martin's chest. Yeah, it was sure a close call, all right. All right boys, open the door here. I call. Captain Burke! Oh, oh, Craig, what's this? Well, I'm going trout fishing with Marty and the sergeant. <laughs> trout fishing? Say, Captain, have you ever seen a trout? Well, uh... They come pretty big, you know. You got to be prepared. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's a good motto. That's a good motto, Captain. Be prepared, you know. Uh, Tommy, uh, do you think that reel is sturdy enough to catch a one-pound trout? A oh, one pound? <laughs> well, after the fish stories you've been telling me, I thought this thing might be a little bit frail. You told me. Now, all that right. This is where we came in, gentlemen. Anglers, shall we go to the fishing grounds? Aye, aye. Let's cross left. Fishing march. grounds. Adios. Good night. Happy. Good night, Happy. Good night, Happy. Good night, Happy. Good night, folks. Martin Kane, Private Eye, has been brought to you by the makers of those four distinctively different pipe tobaccos. Old Briar, the master mixture of rare flavor and aroma. Kill's best flavor cut for extra mildness and cool smoking. Models so high in quality, so low in price. And Tweed, the shaggy, rough-cut tobacco. One of the four, just right for your tobacco taste. And don't miss the radio version of Martin Kane, Private Eye, a different show, starring that famous Hollywood personality, Lloyd Nolan, next Sunday and every Sunday on NBC. Consult your local newspaper for time and station. Tune in next week when America's favorite, the great Freddie Martin, appears as guest on Martin Kane, Private Eye. <laughs> NBC Television.